Well, here we are, guys, ready to do some plinking or target shooting with my 51 Navy that I've reamed the throat of the cylinder out. And thanks to my gorgeous wife with his title, do you suffer from loose ball syndrome? She thought that was quite funny um, in watching the video, and she's the one that came up with this title. And um, just in case, you can probably see that there's a slight breeze. It's supposed to get more breezier this afternoon. So I thought I'd get out here early and uh, try to get some of this done. So I'm going to walk up to the camera. And hopefully, you friends can see, I've got 25 grains of my homemade powder. I am using the powder that I uh, milled with the juniper charcoal. Um, but I've actually got these loaded fairly close to the top. So once again, I'm going to take one shot, check and see if anything has shot loose. Um, there again, this is just for my own knowledge. Um, but one thing I do want to mention is this. This is my Remington 44 caliber cylinder. And I'm not sure what size reamer one might choose to use to ream something like this out. I know if you go on YouTube, there are a few videos out there reaming out these 44 caliber cylinders. My caution would be this. I don't know how well the camera's picking anything up here in my uh, view screen. It's bad reflection but if you take your dial caliper and just measure the thickness of the wall between the cylinders I've got point zero six three if you're gonna choose to do this make sure that your reamer is not going to remove too much material just simply because just playing off of the 0.375 to the 0.380 we all recognize that in the 36 caliber cylinders there's enough material between the walls to remove material and accommodate a little bit bigger ball and I'm not sure what reamer one might choose to use for the 44 caliber but just bear in mind that if you by chance take off five thousandths from this cylinder wall five thousandths from the next cylinder wall you're actually removing a total of ten thousandths which in my opinion on these 44 calibers might be crossing the line of danger so I wanted to make that clear even for my own knowledge I would not remove any material off of a 44 caliber cylinder whether that be a Colt style or a Remington just something to think about so as I stated I'm loaded up just got to cap it reinsert it into the revolver and I'm going to be doing some planking but as you can tell there's a target set up out there and I'm gonna go and be aiming at the bottom of the target from here I can't see my silver pin so it's just gonna be guesswork but as I've stated before I I wanna get a hundred rounds through these guns before I choose to do anything with the sights and that being stated the last time I ordered parts I did order a dovetailed Remington sight that if need be I will install on this gun right here so let me get capped up and I'm gonna just do some planking and we'll just see what happens I'd like to remind everybody also that these are my homemade slick shots so let's see if uh, I have any cap jams this go around
All right, let's get a little bit more of a close-up here. And adjust the camera. Whoops, a little bit more. Well, I'm going to walk up a little closer and see. I can't wait to get this one into the editing program to see where everything printed. Um, I forgot my little pillow that I usually use, so I'm actually shooting off of my wooden bench rest and I have a piece of cotton cloth in there um, so I am going to take a moment to walk back and get my my little pillow just so that I can be consistent so stay tuned okay I got the camera up close you can see the shots close up um, I went ahead and put a pencil mark um, that's approximately where I was aiming but I wanted to show you friends something there again 25 grains 0 0.380 round ball and what I did the other day you can probably see I put another piece of plywood but this time I screwed in some 2 by 4s I wanted to see for sure if that 3.8 3.380 round ball with 25 grains would go through a 2x4 which we all know is about an inch and three quarters maybe so I just wanted to show you something here real quick that's actually one of the round ball sitting on top of the dirt pile so I know one got through not only the thickness of the 2x4s but also the thickness of the plywood which is also half inch um, I'm going to get turned around so you can see the back side of this so you can see the round ball that's still stuck in the back side of my target that 0.380 with 25 grains of my homemade powder at least has the capability of going through a 2x4 plus the thickness of this piece of plywood I don't know about you but I'm impressed and uh, as I point to this it should be noted that I forgot to uh, uh, see if any of my balls came loose so I'm gonna load back up a 25 grains and uh, try to remember to check this cylinder after every shot well, I hope you guys can see that those round ball are pretty close to the top. I tried putting a dowel on top of them and marking the dowel and um, just not getting a good reading on the dowel or a good mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot one, remove the cylinder, and then just visually look at it. And hopefully I can tell whether my balls are shooting loose or or if I suffer from loose ball syndrome stay tuned They all look about the same to me. I'm just going to spin the cylinder. They all still look the same. Still look the same. They look like they're in the same position.
last one looks like it's in the same position. Well, for me, that answers that question. This next go around, I'm gonna load up with 22 grains to see if the um, if the impact point is any different. So I'm gonna get um, camera turned around, take a look at the target, and we'll see where we're at. Well, having that little cross down there, I could barely see it from 16 yards, but I had a good indication where it was. And um, it looks like my point of impact came up. I'm gonna go get a much closer look kind of mark those off load up with my uh, 22 grains and see if there's any difference in the impact stay tuned so I went ahead and put up a paper plate so that I can actually see for myself where these are going to hit I went ahead and loaded 22 grains because I just want to see for myself if the gun actually shoots better at 22 or 25 grains Depending on where this hits, I might cut back to 20 grains and just play with the charges and see which one really does a little bit better. looks like it's all over the place but I will tell you there was two shots that I thought I pulled was the second and the fourth but um, I won't know until I get it into the editing program and obviously that's my excuse I'm gonna stick to it but it looks like I've got two um, one of them is pretty close to dead center of the black dot and the other one's cutting the ring so I'm gonna take a gander get up a little closer and um, see what it looks like up close well I'm real curious to get this into the editing program because I could have swore I shot six rounds there's only five impacts on that paper plate so either I've got one that's an absolute double or that one I thought I pulled didn't even hit any of the backstop because I looked at all the two by fours and there's there's no fresh impact so I'm real curious to see um, what that previous round really looks like this round I'm loaded up with 20 grains of my homemade black powder with juniper as the charcoal um, and I did swap out to number 11 percussion caps once again those cones are getting a little dirty and it's getting a little difficult for me to push those or seat those caps all the way down so um, I'm going to make this one my last shot for real. <laughs> so don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share it with your bestest of buddies. May your aim be straight and your sensibility spot on. And before you make any adjustments, think twice.
Well, it appears this gun likes 20 grains. You can see the pencil marks of the ones that have already impacted. You can see that there's one, two that are outside of the group, but four of them appear to be in a singular group. So I might just have to play with this gun more often with 20 grains and see what happens. But I'm curious to see if on the back side that 20 grains has gone through the target. All right, you guys can see the center of the impact, but if you can recall real quickly where that group of four was, it was a little lower on that plate in an about maybe the 7, 730, 8 o'clock position, which would actually make this about the 4 o'clock position. And you can see the amount of wood that's actually, you know, getting pushed out because of the impact. So if that's 20 grains with a .380 round ball, I'm still impressed. Have a great day, friends. Bye.